Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mount Studio. And in this video, you're gonna learn how to do conditional navigation. Now I know you might be familiar with navigation in Swift UI using the navigation link, but there's another way you can navigate or switch screens conditionally. This came about because someone was reading my Swift UI animations mastery book and they did this challenge and he wanted to know, after you go through these onboarding screens and the continue button shows up, how do you actually continue to the next screen? <laughs> and I realized, I don't think I've ever taught this anywhere. So I'm creating a video now to teach you guys how to continue to your main page. And we're going to do that conditionally with an if statement in Swift UI. So keep watching if you wanna learn how to do this. Okay, I am in a Swift UI project and that screen you just saw, I copied it over here and you can see it working here. Like I can click on the one, two, and three. And this is an onboarding screen, right? And then you have a continue button and when I click it, nothing happens. Well, we want something to happen. We want it to go to a different screen. And we probably don't want the onboarding screen to show again for the user next time they start the app. So I'm gonna show you how to do that too. Okay, so that's your onboarding screen. I'm not gonna show you the code because that's not really what this video is about. And then we have a main view. This is the view you want them to navigate to. Now, this is pretty simple. It's just uh, some text and it has a button there's a button to allow the user to go back and rewatch the onboarding screen. Because remember, when they click that continue button, you don't want to show them the onboarding screen every time they start your app, right? So what are we going to need to accomplish this? We're going to create another view, and that view is going to switch between these two screens. And it's going to be conditionally, meaning I'm going to use an if statement, but then we need to store that value that the if statement looks at. So first of all, we have this folder here, we have the two screens. So I'm gonna add another view to this folder. So let's add that now, let's say a new file. It's gonna be a Swift UI view. And I'll call this my main app screen or main app view. And let's just uh, delete some of these lines up here. We don't need those. Now we need a conditional statement here and we're going to need some kind of property to look at. And I talked about storing a value. So when the user starts the app for the second time, they're not gonna see the onboarding screen, right? So what we can do is we can create a property here. And we'll say onboarding equals true. And there we have a property. And when it's true, we wanna show the onboarding view. And then if it's false, we're gonna go straight to the main view like that. Okay, this is good and this will work, like for example, if we resume right now, we're gonna see the onboarding view. But the problem is when we click continue, if we change this value to false, it's not going to persist. So we wanna persist this value. And there's a really good property wrapper that we're gonna to use to do that. And that property wrapper is called app storage. And this is another one of my books that I have. It's called Working With Data in Swift UI. And it goes through all these different property wrappers and how to use them. <laughs> the right way to use them, the wrong way to use them. And it helps uh, solve some problems for some of the people that might be confused with these property wrappers. So let's look at app storage. Now you can see in this example how you actually create an app storage property. You basically want to give it a key, right? It's going to have a key. And it's going to take that key and it's going to store it with your app data so that when you shut your app down and bring it back up, it knows what key to look for and it's going to get the value and it's going to repopulate your property. And there's one important thing that I mentioned down here too, that when you set a value to this property, like in this case, we're setting username to Mark, but it doesn't mean it's gonna be set every single time. That's a default value. And that default value will only be used if that key doesn't exist. Like the very first time the person starts the app, that key's not gonna exist. App Storage is gonna create that key and it's going to assign it Mark. So in our case, if we take a look here, we have value being set to true, but it doesn't mean it's gonna get set to true every single time when we use the property wrapper. So that's one important thing to understand about this property wrapper, app storage. Another important thing to understand too, is let's look at this other page, is the persistence. So you can shut the app down. And if we look at this video here, you see that I change the value, I shut the app down. When I start the app back up, it remembers the value, it remembers the value that we set for the dark background. 
So it persists when you shut the app down and then open it back up. So that's what makes this property wrapper the ideal candidate for onboarding screens. It can remember if the person already saw it or not. So let's use that. And it's just a use the at sign and then app storage and then a key. So let's go back into our project here and we'll add it right here. There it is right there, app storage. And I'm just gonna give it the same name as our property here, the same key will be onboarding. Okay, this is great. But now when we get to step three here, let me rerun this. When we get to step three, when you click that continue button, we want to change this value of this app storage. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this property here and I'm going to add it to our onboarding view. So we'll just add it right here. And now when we click on that button, we want to set onboarding to false. So let's go in here, we'll find the button. It's gonna be all the way down here. And this is the continue button. You can see the continue right here. So we'll just say onboarding equals false. There you go. So here's what's gonna happen. Because this is the parent, as soon as we click that button, this value will become false. And as soon as it becomes false, it'll show this view instead. So it's going to unload this view and then show this view. And then when the main view is showing, you know, we also have this other button here. Let's just resume that. We have this other button, rewatch onboarding. Okay, so what we're going to need is that app storage again. And that's the cool thing about app storage is you can access it from many different screens. Actually, let's go here. We'll just copy it from here. We'll go back to the main view. We'll paste it up here. And then in this button, we're going to set it to false. Onboarding equals false, like that. Now you could also, because it's a Boolean, you could use the toggle function as well. And that'll switch it from true to false or false to true. Okay, so let's try that and see how it works. Let's go back to our main app view. We can run it, go through one, two, and three, click continue, and there we go. We're back on the main view. And if the user wants to rewatch the onboarding, they can click this button. It changes that value of your app storage, and then it shows the onboarding view again. So you can just keep going back and forth between like that. Now you notice this transition is it's pretty quick, right? I mean, it just unloads one view and loads another one pretty fast. You might want to animate that, uh, make it look more like a transition from one screen to another that the user might be more familiar with. And you can do that using the transition modifier. That's another animation technique. So I'm just gonna show you that real quick because you probably wanna use something like this. Oh, just to let you know, this video as well as hundreds of other videos are part of my Explorers Club where you can gain membership and get instant access to this video and everything else, as well as the code that's used to create this onboarding screen. Okay, let's continue. So let's see, when we go to the main view, we want to slide that in from the right. So let's try that. We'll add a transition here. Now, when you add a transition, you have only like five options. You do opacity, scale, slide, and there's another one called move. So we're gonna use the move and we want to slide in from the trailing side here. Now, if you're not familiar with transitions, let me give you a quick overview here. In the same animations book, it's actually the next chapter here. So we can uh, take a look at transition and there's a really simple explanation here. Transition, you need three parts. So you need a condition, something that inserts or removes a view from the view hierarchy or from the screen, right? So we already have that, we have that condition. And then you actually need the transition modifier, which I just added. And then you actually need an animation. Right now, when I try to use this, so we go back. Now I added the transition. so when that main view gets loaded right here, it's going to slide in from the trailing side of the screen. But you notice when I click continue, <laughs> there's no sliding, right? Because it needs an animation. So what we can do is we can just uh, add an animation here like this. We'll say animation and we'll just go with the default animation. Now when we go back and we click on continue, you notice nothing happened, right? So this is the thing with transitions that I've noticed. Sometimes you have to run the app and sometimes you have to run it on a device to actually see the transition and the animation that goes with it. So if we run this right now, let's see what we get. 
Okay, so I'm running the app in a simulator. I go to number three, I click continue, and you notice it slides out, right? So let's, let's take a look at that again. Slides in. Okay, so it, that might make it look a lot better for your user to add that transition. Now, one of the things that I noticed that if you wanna see that transition or that animation inside of the preview, you know, this canvas right here, you could do something like this. You could just add a, uh, embed this in a V stack that won't change anything here. Okay, and then move that animation down one more onto the V stack. Now let's resume this. Okay, and then if I click three, click continue, you notice there's an animation there, right? So that's just one thing you could do if you wanna see the animation in your canvas. Now there's also some other ways that you could add animations too. For example, you could take this animation and you could add it directly to the transition itself. But I don't think you're gonna see that in the canvas. Let's just check it real quick. Yeah. And you might not even see it in the simulator either. <laughs> Let's just double check it here. So I'll go to three, click continue. Yeah, you don't even see it. Yeah, you'll probably see it on the device, but it makes it really hard to debug and to test with. And the funny thing is too, sometimes the problem isn't actually the animation or the canvas. Sometimes the problem is just the transition itself. Like the opacity, you might be able to see that, you know, that's just kind of like fades in. So let's see if that works on the canvas. Yeah, see, that worked, right? But the uh, the move didn't. So it sometimes depends on the transition, but the animation should work. Now, if you're working with iOS 14 app or earlier, then this is how you show the animation. If you're working with iOS 15, what you're gonna have to do is you're going to have to add a property, another property to your animation. So you wanna add the name of the property that is causing the change. In this case, it would be onboarding. So you're gonna add onboarding to this animation right here to specify that's the variable that's changing that's gonna cause the animation. Well, we don't have to do that now because we're this is an iOS 14.5 project, I think. So I tried to actually do this in the beta version of Xcode and I ran into some problems. That's why I switched back to Xcode 12.5, just so I could show you guys this. Okay, that's it for the video. You learned how to create conditional navigation using nothing but an if statement. And then you also learned how to add a transition when the views get loaded and unloaded for a better user experience.